Today we're talking all about the importance of staging your property for the quickest sale possible. Welcome back everybody and thank you so much for joining me. It is an absolute pleasure to have you tuning in again this week. Today we are talking all about staging your property and all the exciting things that come with that. Now, if you do like the information here today, be sure to pop a like on the video so it gets in front of people that can benefit from this information. And if you haven't already, be sure to pop a subscribe and join the growing community. My name is Justin Little. I'm a local real estate agent here in Hamilton, Ontario, and I love making educational videos about the Hamilton real estate market. If you're looking to get a hold of me directly, you can click on the link in the description below to get a hold of me at a time that is convenient for you. There we go, intro done, let's move on and talk about staging your home for a quick sale. Now, I've had the fortune of interviewing uh, one of my favorite stagers, I hire her for all my listings to either do a consultation or stage it herself, and I picked up a few things that I wanna share with you because I think this is very applicable. When I talk about staging a property, we're not always talking about staging the entire house. A lot of people think all your furniture has to come out, all this super modern, great furniture has to come in. That's not the case. If you're selling a vacant property, that's what we'll do because we have no choice. But if your home already has furniture in it, we just wanna maximize your furniture, maybe bring in a few accent pieces and just really change the flow of the property so it appeals more to people. Now, the important thing with staging to remember is that the stager is looking to not only depersonalize, which we're going to get into, that's point number one, actually, but they're looking at setting up your house in a way that makes the most sense for pictures, because then that draws people in. And then when they're in, not because the photograph showed well, the furniture makes space, makes sense in the space. So let's talk about it. Let's get into this. Number one declutter and depersonalize. So the biggest thing is you want to get as much stuff out of your house as possible, uh, especially when it comes to big bulky furniture. You don't want to have too many chairs or too many bed couches or an overly large couch in a room that's just eating up all the space because it makes the room look smaller. You also want to take all the stuff off the countertops. Basically, me and my wife always joke when we sell our properties that uh, let's just, okay, now it's time to make it look like nobody lives here. So you want to declare and depersonalize. You want it to make it like nobody lives there. So that way the people purchasing your house can envision themselves living in it. Number two, clean it thoroughly. Even if you have to hire a cleaner, I don't know how many times I've shown a property and the property was nice, but it was dirty and you're walking and you could feel the dirt under your socks or somebody's barefoot in the house and they're getting stuff. It's just not a great feeling. So you want to make sure it's clean, even light switches. If you're people touching them, they can be dirty doorknobs, sticky countertops that are dirty. Just try to keep things clean. Give it a deep clean because even if a house is dated, if it's clean, people don't mind that it's dated because they think, okay, this is clean. I can live in it and we'll just update it when we need to update it. Number three, you want to neutralize the decor. So you want to go with a neutral color pattern that is appealing to everybody, depending on the times. Right now it's gray. Gray is, I guess it's not really going out. I'm looking at my wall because I got gray, but grayish is another color, the gray beige that's coming in, but you want to make it look as neutral as possible. So it appeals to a wide range of people and tastes. Not everybody's going to love a bright red wall or a bright blue wall, pink wall, that sort of thing. So you want to neutralize it as much as possible. Number four, something that a lot of people underestimate is the curb appeal. Stop sleeping on this because curb appeal is huge. I've actually had clients pull up to properties that we have booked. They pull up in front. We get in the driveway. They get out of the car. Sometimes they don't even get out of the car. They say, Justin, we don't want to see this one because it might've looked nice in the photos. Maybe somebody took creative photos or a little bit of editing on it, but then you pull up and you're like, what? Okay. You know, it doesn't look nice from the outside. I don't even want to go into this thing. So don't, uh, don't rest on curb repeal. That can be a very big thing. Number five, furniture arrangement. You want to make sure that everything has a good flow. You want to have space for people to walk around the rooms, especially bedrooms. You don't want to throw overly large beds in rooms just because then people feel like it's smaller, feel like it's tighter. And as well, you also want to have walking space to the windows because I know from experience, everybody always walks into a room. They look at the room, then they mosey on over to the window and then they look out the window. What's out this window? So you want to have clear space to get to the window. So people feel like they can enter the room, walk in it, feel the space of it. Number six, focus on key rooms. So you don't necessarily have to stage every room, but I would consider it in the kitchen, 
making it as decluttered as possible, neat and organized. The living room, because that's a, basically the main hub of your home where people are sitting, relaxing, company comes over. And then I would say probably the primary bedroom and ensuite if you have one or main bath if you have it. Those are probably the key rooms that I would suggest uh, focusing on. You want to let in number seven, you want to let in natural light. That is huge. Open the blinds, open the drapes, get as much light in that house as possible because people feel good when they're around bright light. Nobody wants to walk into a house when it's dark and it's dingy and you really can't, it just doesn't appeal well. You just don't feel comfortable. But when you walk into a house that's bright and airy, it just changes your whole energy uh, and especially the people walking through your house for the first time. Number eight, I would say create an inviting ambiance. In a sense, now this when it comes to scents in a house, this is a big thing for me with ambiance, is there's certain smells that will trigger people to think that you're covering up something versus a smell that smells good. For instance, Febreze has a high, when we smell Febreze, it's a high likelihood of what are they covering up? Is it dog? Is it cigarette? Because that's why they're spraying the, spraying the Febreze on the couch and stuff like that. Uh, whereas other scents, like say an apple cinnamon glade plug-in, might have more effect because, oh, that's a nice smell. It almost doesn't feel like they're covering it up. However, I'm always walking through the houses with people and they might smell something and say, oh, yeah, what are they, what are they trying to cover? Um, but smell is a big thing. You do want it to smell nice when people walk into your house. You just don't want to make it seem so strong that you're covering something up. Number nine, highlight the functional spaces. So highlighting functional spaces, I mean storage rooms and stuff like that. A lot of people just tend to toss stuff into the storage room um, and people kind of look at it. Oh yeah, that's kind of big. It's got a bunch of boxes in it. But if you have it nice and organized and people can walk in and actually see the space in the room, it's a big difference. Even garages. Now I know a lot of times people put stuff in the garage to declutter the house and that's completely fine. But if a garage is clean and people can walk into it, take a look around, they will. They'll check it out. They want to see what they can do. Can their Christmas tree go up on the storage shelf up at the top? Stuff like that. Number 10, depersonalize the outdoor space. So again, this is something that you want to go as neutral as possible outside. You want to appeal to a wide range of, uh, of things with that. Like you don't want to have, if you like decor, like all your furniture is 1980s, art deco furniture it doesn't match the house at all people might come in and focus on the weird furniture that you have outside instead of actually focusing on the space and how they can lounge in it and enjoy it barbecue all that kind of stuff number 12 fix repairs and upgrades this is one to not be underestimated i should have probably moved this up on the list you want to fix these upgrades or even just small repairs because even little holes in the wall scuffs baseboards that might not be cocked, just these little small things that people look at and they think it's just, it's just missing that finishing touch. And then when people start to see things on the outside not look great, their immediate mind goes, well, it doesn't look great here. I wonder what's going on behind the walls. So definitely, if you have some small repairs to do, I would highly recommend it. I, and that's by small repair, I mean small repair. If you think you need hardwood and that's going to sell the house faster, like don't even bother because somebody might hate your hardwood. You're better off with the carpet. Somebody can come in and uh, do the hardwood that they want. And then lastly, uh, I'd say recommend getting a professional stager in. I cannot underestimate that. The girl that I use is absolutely fantastic. Um, she can work with your furniture to make sure that your house showcases the best. I bring her in for consultation on every single listing because I think it's absolutely crucial with getting the most amount of money for the property. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video this week. I know it was a little bit longer, but I have a feeling it brought a lot of value to you. And I look forward to making another video for you next week. Take care.